What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. And today is the long-anticipated rematch against our division rival and subscriber-filled Savannah Spirits team. 7-0, best team right now in the SFL. They have nine subscribers on their team. And they bested us 31-28 back in week five. So this is definitely a revenge game. We're kind of on a little hot streak here, winning two in a row. You know, our season did start out uh, pretty dismal, but we're starting to figure things out. And guys, we are now up to 46 subscribers in the league. We have seven new subscribers joining in today's episode. If you would like to join the SFL, check the pinned comment down below. Comment all your player specs, and I will add you in the next episode. Also, check out the official SFL Discord. Link is in the description. To stay up to date with SFL news, stats, standings, and just a general chat section, all that good stuff, it's a great time. But today, guys, we got to take a look at uh, these new subscribers we got joining the SFL and we got to prepare to possibly get our cheeks clapped against the only undefeated team in the SFL. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. Three new subscribers joining our very own Tuscaloosa Terminators, all submitted by Kraton the Dark One. So appreciate you bolstering up this Terminator squad. Big change at running back. No more Christian McCaffrey. No more CNC. Instead, we are bringing in JJ Huntington. He will be playing alongside Drew Thompson in the backfield. 5'10", 187 out of Alabama. He is a receiving back. Okay. Kind of just, you know, kept Christian McCaffrey's stats, but lowered them a bit. As you know, all subscribers start out at Star Dev. Unless you are a channel member like uh, my man Bobby Donuts here, then you can get Superstar or Superstar X Factor. But JJ here, 93 speed, 92 carrying, so pretty fast, pretty sure-handed, and also a uh, 88 break tackle. So even with Christian, our running game has pretty much been absent so far this season so maybe adding jj huntington here will help to provide us a spark coming out of the backfield no more romeo dobbs either at receiver so playing opposite side of deandre hopkins we have mr ty huntington here brother of jj huntington so ty is six foot 189 out of auburn a deep threat archetype he's got 92 speed he's also got some pretty good route running attributes at 83 short 86 medium 84 deep 90 catching so very sure-handed and you know romeo dobbs had been playing pretty well for us so ty here gonna have some uh pretty big shoes to fill not sure what shoe size romeo dobbs is but whatever whatever he is i hope ty is that size and or and or bigger what <laughs> but uh nice to see another subscriber on offense a lot of them have been on defense and Ty here looking to give us a spark in our receiving game. And then another Huntington brother joining on defense. So we just got a whole family on our squad here. Uh, Roquan Smith is our middle linebacker in the 4-3, but we also do run three four sets as well. So TJ Huntington here will definitely see some snaps coming out of that 3-4 defense, playing the middle linebacker position. He's six foot two, 219 pound Georgia Bulldog, a field general and he's a uh, pretty well-rounded i would say i mean good tackling at 89 good block shedding so hoping he can shut down the run we have had some problems stopping the running game here so far in the season but also you know good hit power good pursuit as well and pretty good coverage skills i mean man coverage 73 that's gonna primarily be what he's doing when he's in the sets there on the uh three four uh or stopping the run that is and okay power rush okay finesse moves for a middle linebacker but all in all the huntington brothers hopefully they can help us get our fourth win of the season today and get back to 500 two new subscribers joining the salem steelhawks in the nfc west pairing up with cameron moore the quarterback not oreo the edge rusher and also daniel thg 
the cornerback, we have Ian Taliercio. Hopefully I pronounced that right. If not, please correct me. But shout out at Casual Sports Guy. You will be the new running back in Salem. And I like those jerseys, man. All jerseys made by me. All teams made by me. If you guys don't know, go download them in the download center if you like them. But Ian here is 5'9", 170 out of, Wash out of Washburn. That's supposed to be Washington, I believe. I'm going to have to change that. I think... I don't know. I think it's supposed to be Washington, but I just put Washburn. So I will make that change. But Ian here is an elusive back. He's got 86 break tackle, 93 speed, 92 carrying, 84 juke move, 76 spin move. So, you know, star dev, pretty well-rounded as I tend to make all the subscribers joining the SFL. I try to make you a mid 80s and give you a chance to kind of develop and, you know, see how you naturally progress. Progress, that is, but uh, shout out to Ian Talercio. And then also joining the tight end, we have Joe Uno. So shout out at Sleepy Joe Edits. Had to give him the Uno as his number as well. And Joe here is 6'6, 230 out of Iowa. So another great uh, Iowa tight end. And ironically enough, gave Joe the George Kittle build. So there you go. 87 speed to go along with 88 catching. Pretty good short, medium route, not so much the deep route, but hey, he's a tight end. He's probably going to be utilized in the short to uh, intermediate side of the field. And some okay blocking stats too for a tight end, that is. He's got uh, 52 pass block power, 61 pass block finesse, 60 run block finesse, 57 run block power. So nothing crazy, but pretty, uh, pretty solid here. And Joe is going to be looking to uh, duplicate the efforts of George Kittle when he is on the field here for the Salem Steelhawks. New quarterback here on the Portland Destroyers teaming up with wide receiver Alexander Kleblek. So got a new subscriber duo in town. We have Mr. Dominic Young. So the old head, 38 years old with the TB12 build. I love it, man. Most of the time when subscribers join, they're, they're young, you know, low 20s, which is cool. But it's nice to have a different, fun type of build here. And Dominic Young, not so young, at 38 years old, out of Kansas State. He is a field general. And just like Tom, he has the 99 awareness. Uh, replacing Jared Goff, who hasn't really been playing too good for the Destroyers, really. But maybe Dominic Young can uh, inject some new life in this squad. But yeah, 99 awareness to go along with 90 throw power. Pretty good accuracies, especially on in the short range. Good at play action. So we'll see if Dominic Young can be the next Tom Brady here in the league. And then joining the Savannah Spirits, who we are playing today, and they just continue to add subscriber after subscriber. Maybe that's why they're 7-0. But we have a new edge rusher here in town, and that would be Eli Acro. So shout out at Elliot2527 down there in the comments. And Eli here, six foot three, 220 pounds out of Oregon. He is a speed rusher and he's got 85 speed, but 89 finesse moves. So definitely gonna be uh, probably causing us problems. Our offensive line play really hasn't been that good as it is. So Eli here, Will will be calling his number today, his name today. Probably, we will probably be calling all the subscribers on the Spirit's name today as it should be a tough one going up against the best team in the SFL. And last but not least, we have our first trade request of the SFL season. Quarterback here, Chase Kaiser, moving over to the Las Vegas Jacks, coming over from the Rochester Rebels. So swapped you out with uh, Kirk Cousins per your request. And the Las Vegas Jacks have... Kind of been struggling so far uh, to this point of the season. So maybe having Chase here on the team can help get them back on track. I mean, he's going to be throwing to the likes of Tyreek Hill and Drake London. So maybe Kirk just wasn't getting it done. So Chase Kaiser, now a member of the Las Vegas Jacks. We are ready to dive in here. I forgot we're supposed to get DeAndre Hopkins more touches. We had a little press conference. I do all that stuff off camera here. And uh, he was uh, unhappy about his touches, so he wants like eight receiving, eight receptions, and randomly two rushing attempts. Don't know if he's gonna get that. So if DeAndre becomes unhappy and wants to leave, guess what, DeAndre? We got plenty of subscribers that we can replace you with, so you might want to just chill out. And I got something special here in this game. We are gonna go ahead with the Savannah Spirits and rock the alternate jerseys, the Halloween Knights. I mean, just look at those. 
how fitting it is here on October 20th as I record this almost Halloween to bust out the Halloween nights. But if you guys are fired up for this SFL series and you're loving this content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. We are on the road to 2000 subscribers. And without further ado, let's get on back home to Tuscaloosa and get ready for the game. Coming to you live from Skynet Superfield here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And the Spirits are going to start off with the ball. So we will get a look at this defense who, what can I say? We, we've we had some trouble this season. Kind of started to turn it around a little bit. But this man here, Caleb Hayes, I mean, I would say front runner for MVP. You know, we uh, checked the stats out a few weeks ago. And there you see almost 2,000 passing yards, 19 touchdowns to five interceptions and he's playing a defense that allows a lot of points. <laughs> that's that's all I can really say about that. So we're going to need to uh, to tighten up here today. And you know what? Let's just start out uh, blitz here with some press. Maybe get back there to Caleb Hayes. Make him, make him think about it. He could take off and scramble. And he is going to outrun Terminator's players. What's going on? A 41-yard dagger run by Hayes. Gotta watch that, man. He is very fast, and I can't believe that we didn't have a chance to at least, like, attempt to arm tackle on that one or something. Uh, that's a big opening play. And you know what? The Spirits team, are, the Spirits team is 7-0 for a reason. They got lots of good players. That time giving it to Daniel Banks, but Roquan Smith, the SFL leader in TFLs, gets another one there on first down. We'll test out man coverage here. Uh, if Hayes starts dicing us up or, you know, if, if receivers start winning off a press a lot, we may switch it up. Oh, look at that. It is none other than Aiden Leslie drilling Daniel Banks for a loss of five. That was a little reverse end around, and we were not fooled by that one at all. Huge play by the Terminators. Now, can we please, please hold them to a field goal here? That would be absolutely amazing. Just don't allow a big play. It's a screen. Banks going to get it, but we are there to meet him. Amari Taylor was the first to lay the hit on Banks. They're kind of getting into it a little bit. And after that huge, huge dagger run, crisis averted. We're going to settle for a Cameron Dicker field goal attempt, which I am totally fine with. Three points in my book against this tough Spirits team is a win. Now let's see what Drew Thompson and our offense has in store for us today. Hey, look at Mr. Thompson's stats here. This is his third week or fourth, question mark, one of the two. He hasn't been on the team long, and he's playing pretty good. Always like to see positive on the uh, touchdown-interception ratio, of course. So that is good, and hopefully we can continue that uh, type of trajectory today. We'll start out here, single back. DeAndre Hopkins wants more targets, he says. So maybe this is a quick step drop and sling. I don't like it. We'll just fire to Najoku, who has been a nice safety blanket for us. He's able to pick up a good first down. Nice way to start here for Thompson and the terms. Now let's see what our new running back here, J.J. Huntington, got some big shoes to fill, replacing CMC, and really not too much to work with there in the way of blocking. Get a look at JJ stats last week. Of course, that was really Christian stats, but you know they're gonna carry over to uh, to JJ because it's same player, <laughs> really, in essence. And uh, yeah, so it's only a game two, not really that great. I'll tell you what though, I am actually gonna send Huntington because even if he doesn't get this, maybe we have Hopkins on the curl. But I actually, like the coverage, can we get it to Huntington? We do. Big catch there from Drew Thompson. Subscriber, wide receiver, instantly coming in and making an impact. You love to see that. I knew that it was going to be a tight window, but we did pass lead that. And Drew Thompson did get just enough under it. Great, great conversion by the Terminators. We got ourselves a pretty good drive cooking, though. I don't like that Jesse Bates, though, is matched up there on Huntington. That could be a, yeah, not even going to look that way. Nope, it's not worth it. Jesse Bates is one of the better safeties in the league. He's got that X factor there for a reason. So second and nine, we'll come out here with the, it's a little mesh concept. Oh, Najoku's open and Thompson going to find him. He had nobody there on him. Looks like one of the defenders might have uh, kind of got uh, picked 
you know, a pick set on him like a basketball screen. So I don't know how Najoku got that open, but you know what? Boys and girls, I'm not arguing with it at all whatsoever. We got this thing down to the 13 here. Let's have Hayden Hurst block. We are going to uh, try to roll out and maybe hit Hopkins, although that is also a D hop side of the field. I don't like it. Not risking it. Just throw it away, and that will bring up second and 10. Worst case scenario, we are in a uh, Corey Booter field goal range. So I think I'm just going to send Najoku here, maybe just clear out some of this riffraff and maybe get Hopkins. Ah! I, uh, we're going to get sacked there, aren't we? Yep, we sure are. It's Cam O'Shea, subscriber linebacker for the Spirits. The uh, Spirits got subscribers all across the board here, <laughs> every which way that you look at it. So defense, offense, doesn't matter. They got him everywhere. Um, but I do see DeAndre Hopkins is getting pressed. Jesse Bates is not on that side of the field either. So uh, it's not going to be, no, not going to be a Hopkins shot. We'll give it to Huntington. And if nothing else, it'll just make it an easier attempt here by subscriber Corey Booter. And that was new linebacker Eli Acro making the stop. See if Corey Booter can uh, boot this one home here. Should be able to. A little chip shot field goal. And very good. So 3-3 three, three on the scoreboard. Good defense. Good bend but don't break defense by both squads. Both teams were able to drive down the field. And uh, defense kind of tightened up there at the end. So we got a 3-3 three, three ball game on our hands. And let's see what Caleb Hayes and these spirits have for us. On drive number two, Jackson Prime, subscriber, corner going to get it. He's got a little bit of a lane. Luckily tackled there, and their drive will start from the 32. And you get a look at the passing leaders. Yeah, Caleb Hayes, top in the SFL. Also see Lucas Spicer in there, Cameron Moore as well. So shout out to uh, all you subscribers doing your thing out here. Stuff in the stat sheet, you'll love to see it. Caleb Hayes going to start out shotgun here on First play of this drive, going to send subscriber tight end Dallas Bolton in motion. It's a tight end screen, as a matter of fact. Can't wrap up, Dallas. Brandon Moore finally able to get him, but it was a nice pickup, and that will make it second inches. And if memory serves, I want to say um, subscriber tight end Dallas Bolton kind of carved us up last time we met. Uh, I think that's how... The tape went, and speaking of carving us up, there's Daniel Banks. We're not going to catch him. Banks is off to the races, and he's going to score. Okay. So this is the 7-0 Savannah Spirits here. Uh, <laughs> and you're starting to kind of get a look and see why they are 7-0. I mean, Banks just split the seam there, couldn't get him. We had a couple shots on him there, and he was just off to the races, so... A big play touchdown by the Spirits, and I think that we're going to need, you know, some big play touchdowns of our own here if we hope to match them. About a minute and a half here in quarter number one. Let's test the screen game to Huntington. Got to make sure we, of course, get this ball away. I don't know what the heck that was. I almost wish that Huntington wouldn't have caught that. Uh, it's Cam O'Shea making play after play. I have no idea what, what that was all about. I think that uh, Huntington kind of... Kind of got stuck up on his block. And again, we're seeing the, the DeAndre Hopkins press. We also see the uh, Ty Huntington press, but I really don't want to entertain that side of the field. Oh, Hopkins is open. Come on, Thompson. Drop it in the bucket. Hopkins had to jump out and catch it. Maybe that should have been a bullet pass because I don't know how the heck Hopkins got so open. There was nobody on him. And I threw a, you know, a, a kind of a touch pass, a lob pass because... That's just typically what I do when uh, my receiver wins on press. But I don't know how in the world Hopkins got so open on this. I mean, he just cooked. He Oh, it was the corner blitz is what it was. Yeah, a bullet pass right there. A bullet pass right there. And Hopkins is probably going to the house. But it could have been picked as well. So, I mean, maybe not the worst, you know, worst decision in the world. And you know what? You can't argue with the results anyways because they ended up being pretty good. So nice response by Thompson and these Terminators. And we are going to try again to get J.J. Huntington going in the run game. But there's just, again, no blockers there, really. And uh, he is only able to salvage three. Let's snap this ball. I actually like Huntington on the RPO. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, Huntington with the juke on Jesse Bates. I was about to let that thing go to the end of the first, but I did not see Jesse Bates 
covering us on the RPO. And how about how about Huntington? The Huntington brothers. We got Ty Huntington. We got JJ Huntington. JJ's kind of having a little bit of a tough go at it, but Ty, I mean, he's eaten so far in this first uh, first quarter, and you love to see it. Uh, we're gonna go to JJ Huntington here. Did not really want to go power though. That was not the play that I tried to call. Let's audible this into just a uh, standard ISO follow. Kyle, you've checked the fullback. He's a good one to follow. Huntington searching for blockers. Going to get it all the way down to the two. And you know what? We may just uh, try to Y stick our way to victory here. Oh, man, there. Uh, they got a linebacker out there. I don't necessarily like that. Maybe... Uh, usually I, the Y stick works pretty well. However, we're going to go to Huntington again. Hopefully he can just pick up some yards through the middle and he is going to get shut down. Yes, he is. Wow. Okay. So question decision-making time here. I don't necessarily know. I don't really want to go for it. I don't, I mean the field goal that is, I don't really want to go for the field goal. I'll be honest with you. I think that maybe a mesh spot can get this. Now, this may come back to bite me, and I realize that. But Najoku or Boyd, one of these chaps, hopefully can get open. Is it Boyd? Oh, he stopped at the one. No. Oh, you just need to stretch your arm out, Tyler Boyd. That's all you need to do. It was blanket coverage. I get it. But, like, come on, man. I kind of want to guess run up the middle. <sighs> We're going to do it. I'm going to have Brandon Moore sitting back here just in case. Need a safety. Not going to get it. That was close. That might be the move, though, to guess run up the middle. Um, because even if. They fooled me, right? We're going to guess. We're going to do it again. Now, I'm going to have Brandon Moore back here just in case. But if it is a run up the gut, which it's not going to be. Yeah, see this. I've been lost far too long. Oh, I took a bad angle on it. I took a bad angle on it. That's on me. Brandon Moore. Oh, I got burned. I gambled and I got burned. I gambled and I got burned. I gambled and I got burned. I mean, I guess uh, I had Brandon Moore there, too. DeAndre Smith, a 99-yard receiving touchdown. I mean, what's the chances that uh, that they actually pass that from the one-yard line? I don't know. I gambled, and if it would have worked, I would have been saying, Galaxy Brain, great job. It didn't work, and it's a 99-play touchdown. That's what can happen if you guess run up the middle. And now we really got to march down here and pick up some touchdowns it's all good though because touchdown here and we are right back in it now i got some slants working uh don't necessarily always like the slants and we're gonna be sacked and they say fumble wow okay seven and oh spirits are sticking it to us man they are sticking it to us that's brandon fisk the rookie out of florida state can't fumble the ball you gotta hold on to it and the spirits are probably gonna score here again and this one this one could just be tough. This one could. I mean, they're they're the best team in the SFL, right? So this one just could be tough. Come on. Fumble from uh, Caleb Hayes would be nice. Not going to happen. And that's going to be second and goal from the six. I'm keeping a cool head in this one, though. You know, I, I my expectations are not super high with, uh, with how good this team is. And they're going to score again. And that is George Smith. So the Spirits have 24 points in the first half. We have three. So, you know, we get the ball after halftime, so a little silver lining there. But we're going to need to score, uh, <laughs> hopefully double dip. And it's it, this just could be one of those games where, even though on paper we are higher rated than the Spirits, but that does not mean anything. We're higher rated than all the teams that we lost to this year. So, you know, rating is just the rating. But the Spirits are 7-0, we're 3-4. So I knew this one was going to be a dogfight. Let's see if we can just scratch our scratch and claw our way back into this one. Try a little TE attack here. See if we can maybe hit Najoku. He's usually our target on this one. And we do. The Chief catches it. Such a huge part of this offense. Drew Thompson now at 177 as well. So he is having a pretty good game. It's just that fumble got us. And, you know, 
Defense not really uh, playing too great. So the yardage, though, is there for Drew Thompson. I will say that. And now on first and 10, we're going to operate out of the single back and see what we can do. Najoku again. Look at David. He had a big game last week. He's now at five for 94. And, uh, you know, he's pretty much our offense up until this point. Ty Huntington playing good as well. I almost want to... I almost want to streak Ty Huntington, but having Jesse Bates there just really, <laughs> really scares me. So I'm Ooh. not going to do that. And oh, great adjustment there by Jackson Prime, the corner subscriber. And that will bring up second and 10. Drew Thompson, though, good stats. I mean, 13 for 14, 201 yards, no interceptions. But, you know, not having uh, a reliable ground game is kind of handicapping us a little bit because he's kind of been forced to do it himself. So hopefully Huntington can pick up this one hard fought yard that he needs and he is gonna make a cutback and also get very close to the end zone as well. Two minute warning here, probably gonna let it hit and we'll start the next play from the two yard line. And JJ punched this thing in from two. That's the question, should be a walk in the park TD. I mean, I wouldn't say it was a walk in the park TD, but Huntington is going to get his first touchdown of this SFL season. It's going to say more, of course, because his he's going to have Christian McCaffrey stats. But nice response by the Terminators. I don't like that there's still two minutes, though, on the clock. I mean, if we can actually hold the Spirits and, and get the ball back, that would be awesome. And, uh, yep, I suck at kicks. So the extra point is missed. Surprise to freaking prize. Welcome to the CJ Smalls YouTube channel. There is Daniel Banks stats so far on the season, and he's got to be up there on the touchdowns. I know he is. Don't remember his exact positioning, but I, I do know that he is is up there. Um, I need Taylor to play man coverage. Can we do that? No, we can't. Didn't get there in time. It's going to be Elijah Moore. Got to start taking the right angles, man. I'm taking obtuse angles or acute angles. It's a little, little math lesson for you guys. Got to take the right angles, uh, meaning the correct angles. That's what I'm trying to say. So first and 10 from the 42. Caleb Hayes is cooking, but we know that that's what he does. So no surprise there. Can we maybe get in the backfield, please? I mean, I'll take it. TJ Edwards is going to stop him for a loss of one. and Or not a loss of one, you know, only a gain of one, I should say. And we'll see how aggressive that the Spirits want to go. They're calling a timeout, so I guess they are going to be Fairly aggressive. Let's go man here. Second and nine. I'm going to have Aiden Leslie kind of drop out. It's the tight end. Dallas Bolton making another catch. That's going to bring up third and two. This is actually pretty key for us. I'm not going to not gonna call timeout, but you know what? I am going to go press with the blitz and just maybe, maybe see if we can get home to Williams. We're not going to be able to. And that's going to actually be Allen Robinson. First time we called his name. Spirits will probably take a timeout here, which they do. Yeah, this team is tough, man. This team is definitely tough. Uh, we played them once earlier, and it was a shootout. This one appears to be a little bit more lopsided, but they just, I mean, look at that. Like, Brandon Moore had really good coverage on Elijah Moore, so a little more on more, a little more on more crime there. And I say give me some more of that. They will probably just kick this field goal, I imagine. So maybe if we could sack him and get him out of field goal range, they... Got to hurry, and they are going to have two seconds to get the field goal off. That's annoying, and we got some work to do, boys. We got some work to do coming out of the locker room. It's going to be 27-9, to nine, and really it's been all spirits. Uh, we have, you know, moved the ball efficiently, but just that fourth down, getting stopped at the one-yard line, me being the gambling man that I am, guessing run up the middle, getting absolutely cooked, 27-9. A lot of time to go, but we got to start making some plays right here, right now. Time to roll those sleeves up, boys, and uh, get down and dirty here and start this, hopefully, this epic comeback. We'll start off going to Najoku, who breaks a tackle. Big stiff arm, maybe. Oh, he's upended there. On the outside by Trustin Smith Jr., another subscriber on the Savannah Spirits team. Again, they are uh, chock full of them. <laughs> no shortage of them. We got single high safety. Uh, I am going to send DeAndre Hopkins. He probably won't be my first read, but actually he might. Let's just give him a shot. DeAndre, you want more targets, brother? 
you got to start coming up with some of those if you want more targets. Those 50-50 balls, I really, really need you to, to win them if you can. And we got ourselves now in a big third down. I mean, this is really, it's got to be four down territory, you know, I, I, I would think. I mean, maybe Najoku can be the guy. I think he is. And I mean, this dude, David Najoku is just, he's hungry. He told me pregame that he was fasting for a while, going on a diet, and he was ready to stop that and needed a big, big feast today. I would say he's feasting like it's freaking Thanksgiving in October, getting the Terminators a very much needed first down. All is on the 33. Let's go back to JJ Huntington out of the pistol. Oh, just needed a block to hold there on Dorrance Armstrong. It did not. And that is a loss yeah, in the like backfield. Definitely not we'll what you want to see. And that will make it second and 11. Um, Huntington, I kind of like him coming across the field here. We might have Hopkins or Boyd as well, but I'm kind of looking. Oh, we're going to go to Boyd, actually. Perfectly placed ball by Huntington. Had to sit back there and scan the field. That's going to make it third and one. Come on, JJ. Need you to get one hard fought yard. Let's double team the nose tackle and just see if something can open up here for Huntington, and he's going to get it by the skin of his nards there, <laughs> just barely. And you know what? I'll take that. It's okay. First and 10, fresh set of downs, and we are moving on this drive. This is probably our best-looking drive of the game so far. I'm very tempted to streak D-Hop, but not with Jesse Bates up there, so RPO it's going to be uh, Ty Huntington again. If it's not there, we can dump it off. It's not there. And I mean, my God, JJ Huntington is just drilled there by Harold Landry for a loss of three. It's a good time for a play action shot here, but got to be mindful of Jesse Bates up there. Huntington, did he win? Did he win? He did. I mean, actually, he really didn't. It was good blanket coverage, but I had to lead that pass out there. And how's about Ty Huntington, man? He is coming up big in this game is SFL debut doing exactly what we ask of him and uh you know these Huntington brothers I'm I'm looking for them to be a force on this team and really really help us and we may if the blocking is good I mean we got to freaking one of the best left tackles in the game oh there we go baby it's Huntington thank you bang so we're back in this definitely gonna go for two here probably Definitely, probably. I don't know what that means, but it means that we should. They don't want us to go for two. You know what? No, I, I do. I do. I want to make this a 10-point game. And, ooh, that's not the look I really like on the Y stick. But you know what? We're going to run it anyways. Come on, Hopkins. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was good coverage there, and Hopkins just couldn't win. Cam O'Shea, the subscriber. But you know what? That's okay. I mean, it, it would have been better, I think, anyways, to make it a 10-point game. I realize it didn't work, so in hindsight, it's always a questionable call. But if it works, just like that one that I got beat on the when I guessed, run up the middle. If it works, nobody questions it. If it doesn't work, they do. It didn't work. I need our defense to start working right now empty backfield interesting gotta watch the escapability of uh caleb hayes we know that he can do that when he wants to oh great catch by elijah moore there is just weapons out there on the field i mean think of it like this elijah moore is their third string wide receiver and i'm pretty sure he leads this team in touchdowns i think even yards as well so that goes to show you the depth that this team truly has and this is going to be uh, not a screen. Oh, Jaden Taylor with the timely interception. Yes. Jaden freaking Taylor. That is what I'm talking about. Oh, boy, did we need that. And I think that's his first interception, I want to say. He also returns kicks for us, too. But uh, Hayes was going to George Smith. And we just shot that with Jaden Taylor. And what a what a great much needed interception, much needed turnover. Now the question is, can we capitalize and pay it off with some points and turn this back into a ball game? I sure hope so. JJ Huntington's got two touchdowns on the afternoon, trying to get those yards up. 
I mean, gain of five. I'll take it. Second and five from the 36. Going to go back to JJ Huntington. Please give me some blocks. I mean, there's just nothing there. Spirits are swallowing up the inside. I think this is a good time to call screen pass. Now, I don't typically go to my own plays, but third and four, I like it. Huntington's going to have to get off his block, though, and get out there in the open field. Can he do it? I think he did. Come on. Throw me a block. We didn't even get it. Uh, we didn't even get it there. Uh, it was Lake and Tomlinson, and Huntington had to do it himself, but he did. Those are the types of plays that are going to earn you some some uh, some moxie around here, right? It's going to earn you some clout around here. And that was a good one. Love to see it. Let's go back to JJ. I'm really not giving up on this running game here, guys. I know it hasn't been the greatest, but I feel like we're just uh, you know one play away from breaking it. And, I mean, Huntington is getting four or five-yard carries now, which is going to help out his average. And most importantly, help us get down the field. All right, second and six. David Njoku has been eating on these plays here. And we're going to give him a chance to feast again. He just, man, he's catching everything thrown his way. And that was not even an easy catch at all. He had to survive contact on that one. And uh, <laughs> he most certainly did. Coach is saying RPO. I like that. And I don't like, though, that Jesse Bates. Why does Jesse Bates have to be the one to come down? I would rather it be anybody. Yeah, he has such great play rec, but here's Huntington starting to pick up the pace now. He's at 20 for 70. So he has been a workload today, but he has found the end zone twice. And now we're moving downfield. We're, you know, threatening to score. Might be time for a play action shot again. Coach is calling it. Uh, Jesse Bates is, I wish Jesse Bates wasn't on this team. If I'm being perfectly honest, he's making my life a living nightmare and ooh, very close to a pick from Cam O'Shea. Luckily, it wasn't. And that's going to be the end of the third. Still a chance. We're down two scores. We got to make sure that pick from uh, Jaden Taylor was not all for nothing. We're close to doing it, but still a lot of work to be done. Jesse Bates now dropping down into the box. So I'm definitely going to look for Huntington here. And I think it's going to be almost intercepted. Okay. And you know what? They say a field goal, but doesn't really do much for us. I mean, we're going to have to get touchdowns anyways. It doesn't really do much for us. It doesn't. And uh, I think that we just have to trust that David Njoku can win here. Because a field goal is not, not going to get it done. So let's see if Najoku, come on, David. It's, we're almost sacked. We're almost sacked. That was it. But I mean, what would a field goal really have done there? We, we would still need, it would still be a two score game, right? It would still be a two score game. It would be a nine point game. It, w it, it wouldn't have done us anything. We had, we had to go for that. We, we did. I, I stand by my decision. Again, if it works, nobody questions it. I realize it didn't work on that one, but yeah, unless our defense can come up with another big play, uh, we might have just been outmanned and outgunned here by the Spirits. We're not giving up, though. We're fighting. We're going to fight till that final whistle blows, and uh, maybe something crazy will happen. Who knows? Bruh. That is just a great crossbody throw there by Caleb Hayes. He's a dog, man. He is an absolute dog. Definitely has bragging rights on me here. <laughs> In this series, he finds George Smith for another big one. And a surprise, well, I'm not surprised because in Madden, it's always like this, but they're in attack mode. They're looking to, uh, to you know, put their foot on our necks here, and Daniel Banks just might be the one to do that. Spirit's probably going to score again. They got this all the way down to the six. We got to go blitz, though. Heavy pressure. I mean, that's like our only shot to really do anything, and Hayes is going to do it himself. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, barring something unforeseen, we did win two in a row. So, it's, you know, we, we started to get, get it going. And we just faced a roadblock here in the spirits. It happens. Still a lot of football left to go. The fact that we did get our record a little bit closer to 500, three and five on the season, not the worst thing in the world. See if we can maybe engineer one more good drive. If Jesse Bates blitzes, I may just uh, take a shot to D-Hop. We'll see what he does. He does not blitz. Tyler Boyd is open enough. 
And I mean, Drew Thompson is going to have some pretty good stats, so silver lining there. And uh, also our new running back, J.J. Huntington, he's got two touchdowns. Kind of started to uh, put it together there at the end. So there is some some takeaways. You know, it's not it's not all bad here in Tuscaloosa. David Njoku <laughs> just doing all kind. Oh, juke move, vicious juke. David Njoku, man, he's he's got to have half of our yards. I mean, Drew Thompson, no touchdowns, but 21 for 27, 313 through the air. It's a good stat line from our subscriber QB. Got to score quick here if we look to uh, <laughs> turn this into a ball game. I don't think that we can turn it into a ball game, but J.J. Huntington, he might score. He does. This guy's an animal. Oh, J.J., welcome to the SFL. I like our new subscriber wide receiver. I do. He's he's getting good separation. Uh Taking, taking the place of Romeo Dobbs, who was also playing very good for us. And, I mean, it's back to a two-score game. Like, our defense is going to need to shut them down very, very fast. Can we do that? I don't know. <laughs> but not technically over. Our odds got a little bit better. But still, regardless, if we end up losing this, there's some, some very strong takeaways that I like in this game but the problem here is Caleb Hayes he's been a problem all season and he is the problem for us in this game as well it is not going to be Banks it is just going to be Elijah Moore and Caleb Hayes continuing to be in attack mode here which Madden has to do something about that uh I mean really like I guess I could see a team passing in this situation but I, I said this like last episode too. I feel like they should definitely be more run heavy and that's pass off the mark by Caleb Hayes. Going to make it second and two, trying to still give us a chance. We're going to send pressure here, uh, hoping it's a run to Banks. It's not. I mean, sh how do you how do you stop this team? Answer is you don't. <laughs> Dallas Bolton, the tight end, going to get it. I mean, hey, go ahead and score because I want to see us. I want to see us back on, back on offense again. Even if we don't win this game, so what? This offense has been fun and exciting, with the combination of Drew Thompson and uh, Ty Huntington, our new receiver. And that time it's going to be DeAndre Smith catching it for a gain of five. All right, whatever, just score. I want to get back on offense again. I want to see what uh, Drew Thompson and and Ty Huntington what this connection has. So just hur hurry up and score. They're going to put a 40 bomb up on us. So what? We're used to that by now. We're going to guess run up the middle and actually didn't even work. Daniel Banks punches it in. Spirits continuing to pour it on. See if we can get one good final drive here. This is the same play that we hit uh, Ty Huntington on a little earlier. And he's got a little bit of separation and his big day continues. So Drew Thompson now up to 359 yards. The combination of Ty Huntington and David Njoku has proven to be very fruitful. DeAndre Hopkins not going to be happy after this game, but I don't really care. You're not a subscriber, DeAndre. Subscribers come first, brother. And, uh, you know, we did give you a couple targets and you just weren't able to come down with them. So we, we tried, you know, tried to give you some uh, some deep shot, 50-50 balls. Ty Huntington might get open on this too i i kind of want to streak him uh gotta be mindful of jesse bates there and yeah just a little overzealous it's gonna be cam o'shea the middle linebacker so we are gonna end up hurting drew thompson's stats a little bit but nice job for cam o'shea subscriber linebacker if you're still watching brother nice pick from you and uh, that is going to be the end of the ball game now officially. So our two-game win streak is snapped by the Savannah Spirits. But you know what? That's okay because they're undefeated. Sure, I would have loved to come in here and steal this one. But we're three and five. Our season has started to turn around in these last couple of weeks. And, you know, uh, we don't play the Spirits anymore. So there is that silver lining. And we got some good production from our new subscriber. Really, our subscriber... Uh, Running back and wide receiver, both the Huntington brothers. Not sure if uh, TJ Huntington did anything. Don't know how often we really came out in the 3-4. But, uh, you know, still, it's okay. And getting a look at our subscribers here. So Drew Thompson actually threw for more yards than Caleb Hayes. Both quarterbacks had an interception too. Caleb just had one more touchdown. So really good job by 
uh, our subscriber QB, Drew Thompson, and of course, Caleb Hayes. And the rushing numbers, I mean, JJ Huntington was a workload in this one. 20 attempts, 70 yards, two touchdowns. Daniel Banks had more yardage on uh, 12 fewer attempts. So he averaged 9.7. He had two touchdowns as well. David Njoku was out here killing it, but look at Ty Huntington, seven for 112 and a touchdown. Uh, JJ Huntington, he went three for 13. George Smith had three for 52. He had a touchdown as well. Dallas Bolton went three for 40. DeAndre Smith, he was the one that had that 99 yard re touchdown reception when I uh, tried to guess pass. DeAndre Hopkins is gonna hate us. Okay, whatever. Daniel Banks went two for 26 and somehow Cam O'Shea is also in the uh, <laughs> receiving stats as well. Uh, looking at defense here, Trustin Smith Jr. Five tackles and a pass deflection. Brandon Moore, seven tackles, so he was all over the field. Jackson Prime had six tackles. Eli Acro had five tackles and a TFL, and he had that forced fumble too. So shout out to Eli Acro. Cam O'Shea had that pick, also two TFLs, a sack, eight tackles. He was all over the field. DeAndre Smith had a, he must have had that tackle on the uh, on the interception. TJ Huntington did have some stats. Cool. So three tackles, nothing else, but you know, that is that is okay. Amari Taylor had four tackles. Aiden Leslie had a TFL. Love to see that. Jax Vaden, he had one tackle. Austin Kringle had a tackle. Jaden Taylor, he had that big interception, which I thought for a minute, boy, I thought that was gonna change the tide of this game. It did not, and uh, no stats for Silas Vaden, unfortunately. Defensive line play has been a little suspect. Would love to see those guys get some more stats, but let's check out the rest of the subscriber stats here around the SFL. Toronto Thunderbirds drop another one to the Juno Snow Owls, so their tough season continues. Jordan Baker balled out, though. He had 267 yards for two touchdowns. Just Matt Stafford uh, was a little bit better. So I love the Toronto Thunderbirds. They're my OG SFL team, but unfortunately they do take another L in this one. Jersey Shore D's drop another one. So we beat them a couple weeks ago and they drop to the Akron Summit. So Dragon Zetron, 222 yards and three touchdowns to help will his team to victory. Now we get a look at tight end Jesse Moore. He played pretty good, seven for 51. And also, we got to take a look at subscriber cornerback Aiden Grau. He had four tackles, no picks or, or forced fumbles. And the Jersey Shore Ds started out really, really great. But uh, teams starting to kind of have their number now. Grand Rapids Lightning lose a close one here to the Memphis Suns. And we have new subscriber QB Lucas Spicer, who went off last week. Pretty solid game, 268, a touchdown, but did have that one pick as well. And he sure did get his subscriber wide receiver Floyd Butler involved. He went five for 73. Also had a touchdown as well, but it was not enough to fend off the hot Memphis Suns. St. Louis Sentinels down the Milwaukee Motors 28 to 14. And we had our subscriber quarterback here, Ashton Saber. Good game for him. 291 yards and two touchdowns. He is also up there amongst the top of the SFL in both touchdowns and yards. And this game here, definitely going to help his cause even further. Boulder Rockies beat the Topeka Silverbacks. Battle of the subscriber QBs here. And Lucas Thomas, I mean, he did not do it through the air, but he had three touchdowns, 134 yards. And Kyrie Brooks had 203, two touchdowns, but the three interceptions were just killer, unfortunately. Um, so that is probably, you know, what ultimately sealed the deal. And also Austin Lucas went two for 12. Any QB rushing stats here? Lucas Thomas continues to do it on the ground to 11 for 40. So I'm sure that helped out. And Kyrie Brooks, three for 11. But the Boulder Rockies, shout out to them. They've only lost one game so far this season and they continue their hot streak. Oklahoma City Eels just took it to the Sacramento Sharks, man. They're our division rival too. And QB Mason Buchanan went 213 yards and a touchdown outdueling the likes of uh, of Kenny Pickett, which probably not really too hard to do, in fairness. Brown Briner, the subscriber tight end, went 18 for 57, but two really big touchdowns. 
And Mason Buchanan also added 18 yards of his own on the ground. Salem Steelhawks, though, we just added two subscribers there, and they lose to the Portland Lobsters. So outdueled by Baker Mayfield. Plus Cameron Moore, who had 159, but no touchdowns. Definitely, definitely could have used some of those. And Ian Taylor Seo didn't really have a good game in his SFL debut. 19 for 38, only averaging two yards per carry. Cameron Moore, though, did have a touchdown on the ground, so there is that. He went six for 28, and we have our new uh, subscriber tight end. Where is he at? He had zero targets. Wow. Um, okay, very interesting. Ian Taylor CEO had one for 10, but no targets for Joe Uno. Not even Uno. Not even Uno targets. So Cameron Moore going to need to... Right, look his way a little bit more. Uh, not Oreo continues to pretty much live in the backfield. Uh, no sacks, but a big TFL there. And also Daniel THG. No stats for him as well. So a tough loss here by the Steelhawks. Rochester Rebels get a win without their former subscriber QB Chase Kaiser. It was Kirk Cousins doing all the dirty work. And he uh, was able to get Tommy Pickle. The wide receiver subscriber only one target one reception for 12 yards but ultimately the rebels did get the victory and at the end of the day that's the best stat line in the world north carolina flyers having a tough go at it man they lose to the portland destroyers flyers of course in our division and how about the old head dominic young here 246 two touchdowns and no interceptions alex thompson had a good day through the air he also found the end zone twice but those two interceptions were ultimately, you know, what sealed the deal. And also a nice game here for subscriber wide receiver Alexander Kleblek as he added five receptions for 50 yards. How about the Montana Mountain Lions who we play next week? 31-28 against the Las Vegas Jacks who just added Chase Kaiser and he did not have the best game in the world. 179, but no touchdowns, no interceptions. It was Brock Purdy doing all the damage, and uh, we're going to have to see these Mountain Lions next week. So hopefully they don't have a game like this when we see them uh, here in the next episode. San Jose Industrials, who we play two episodes from now, they killed it against the Fort Worth Rough Riders. Wow. Drake May, who is now the starter in New England, he had a pretty decent game. Uh, but let's see where the damage was done. It was Yeezy Fuentes. Three for 44, but he had a big touchdown, which was apparently enough to propel his industrials to a steaming hot victory. And last but not least, the Albany Argonauts lose to the Louisville Fighters. If you did not see your subscriber in the stats this week, you probably had a buy. So Craig Ray had a pretty solid game. I mean, 223, three touchdowns, but uh, Justin Herbert got the better of him and Bobby Donuts. He's been playing really good as of late, but cooled down in this one, 11 for 53, and no touchdowns could have used. Even one of those might have gotten Albany the victory. So there are your stats here in the SFL here in a week number, it was week eight. And in our next episode, we do take on the one and six Montana Mountain Lions. So hopefully that will be a good, much needed win to get us again trying to get closer to that 500 mark but that is gonna do it for me tonight guys as always i appreciate you stopping by i will catch you on the next one until then peace